Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create some path animations on large scale landscape models in Rhino. This video is going to be utilising this base model I have here, which is created from a LiDAR terrain. We've imported in some three dimensional building models and we've coloured in our base map of our model as per the previous video tutorials I did on creating maps and using LiDAR data. If you want to go back and watch any of those videos, I'll put the links in the description so you can set up your base model as I've got in this video. Now, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to take this base model and set up a sun path animation showing the sun rise and set on a 24 hour period in this landscape. To do this, we first need to set up our render settings in order to clearly show a sun on this model. This can be done by going up to the render panel, going to the render properties, and it will open up the properties window here. Now the first thing we want to do is pick the render we're going to be using for this particular model. You can see on my screen here that I've got the difference between the legacy version of Rhino Render and the current Rhino Render. If you're using Rhino 7 you'll see you'll have these two options and the legacy option often has much darker, sharper shadows whereas the new Rhino Render the shadows might be a little bit lighter as it's using what's called ray tracing to render out these images which means you're getting slightly more kind of light bouncing off the other surfaces of the objects making slightly lighter shadows. The difference between these two is that Rhino Render takes a lot longer than the legacy version and for this particular animation I'm going to be using the legacy render because I want to have a quick sharp shadow that we're getting out. So we're going to start by selecting legacy Rhino Render then we're going to just scroll down in our settings and we're going to go to the lighting setting. Here we're going to turn the skylight off and the sun on and we're going to hit OK. Now what you'll find is if you're on a rendered mode, as I am here, you'll see the lighting slightly changes in your scene and this is all to do with the fact that we've now just got the sun lighting up the scene. We can check this by going into the render tools here, clicking on the sun panel icon and I'm just going to turn on the manual controls there. And here you can see we can start to turn around the angle of the sun we can change the height of the sun in the sky and that way we can have very low shadows if we want and very high shadows. And you can see that very kind of dark shadow we're getting using this particular render engine on this file. So my shadows are now set up. We can now begin to set up our sun path animation. To find the animation tools in Rhino, we need to go to the render tools and these three little icons here are our animation toolbar. Under the first menu, we can click the little drop down arrow and in here we've got this small kind of sun path animation where we can set up a one day sun study or a seasonal sun study. I'm going to set up a one day sun study for this particular example, so I'm just going to left click this option here. Here we can set the location where we want our sun study to be based and that can just be set by clicking the set option and either picking from a location here or typing in your location in this menu. We can also set the particular date that we want the sun study to take place on and the start and end time of our animation. I'm going to start mine at 6 and end it at 9 o'clock in the evening. The minutes between frames will essentially dictate how smooth your sun study is. Maybe you want it every hour, in which case it will render out a single frame every hour between these two time periods and create quite a sort of staggered motion or perhaps you want it to be very smooth, in which case you might render a frame every five minutes, which means you're going to have lots more frames than if you rendered it every hour and the animation will be much smoother. And you can see the two examples here, seeing the difference between if we add more minutes between frames or less minutes to have a smoother animation. For the file type, we're going to keep it as JPEG and we're going to use the capture method render full to allow it to render out a full image for each one of these frames. And for the viewport, we're just going to make sure it's capturing it in the perspective view. And then we're going to hit OK. Now, before I render this, we want to just make sure that we've got the exact view that we want to take it from and that we save that view out in case I accidentally pan around my model. To do this, I'm just going to find the perfect view that I want, which might be this. We might want to switch to parallel mode if you want a flatter image. But for mine, I'm just going to keep it on perspective for now. And we're going to do a little kind of 3D view like this here. Once you've set it, we can then go to view, set view and named views. And we can save that view out like so, just to save it in our named views panel. 
So now our view is saved, we can then render out our animation. Now to do this, we need to hit the record button here, which will then start to render out each of those individual frames of my sun path based upon the time setting I gave it. If we click that record button, it will ask us for a place to save the recording. We're going to click here and we're going to just find a folder to put this in. And I'm going to call this sun path. And we're going to just select that folder. With that selected, we can then hit enter and it will start rendering out our frames. Now you might see on my screen that it hasn't start rendering out any frames yet. And the reason for this, there's a small glitch I've noticed with Rhino sometimes where you might start your sun path animation and it doesn't want to render anything. It just kind of makes the model slightly lighter, tweaking the angle of the sun, but doesn't start to render any frames out. In order to kind of get over this and to allow your thing to start rendering, what I found is if you just quickly go to the turntable animation here, we're going to just set up a turntable. I'm not going to read any of those settings. We're just going to hit OK. And we're going to hit the preview button here just to preview that animation. Once that preview's happened, we can then set the sun study up again, make sure we've got the right number of frames that we want the right time, hit OK. And then if we go back to hit record, choose our folder again and hit enter, it will then start rendering out your frames. So it just allows the sort of software to reset itself and then it should start rendering them as normal. And as you can see here, it's basically loading up each frame and saving it out as a separate image, which will then save in my folder, which I've created here. And we'll end up with a series of our sort of animation rendered out as single JPEG images. Now this is great if we want the shadows to look as they do in these images where they're quite dark in this scene and we've got quite a kind of nice landscape model below. But it might be that you actually want to tweak the kind of opacity of the shadows. You might want to give the shadows a little bit of color as well. And in this case, what I usually do is I'll actually do two versions of this animation. One of these is just gonna be my base model with no shadows on at all. And the other one is gonna be my shadow layer, which is gonna be on a white model, which I can then overlay onto the base. And that way I can have some control over the density of the shadows and the color of them. So to do this, what we'll do is I'm gonna just delete this animation for now. We're gonna go back to our scene. Just make sure, I'm gonna just tweak that view because I just want it to be slightly higher there. And we're just going to resave that. And then we're just going to save out the base model that I have just as a kind of base layer here with this just plain shadow on. You might also, when you do this, perhaps you want to kind of go back to the render properties and just for this single image, we're going to turn back the skylight on there just to give us a flat lighting over the whole image. And then we're just going to capture this either just by going to capture to file, making sure we've got a good resolution. Let's just do 4,000 pixels for this. Keep it to match the viewport. But I'm going to set it to a custom there, 4,000 pixels. And then we'll just save that as a base layer, like so. Once we've got that, what I'm then going to do is we're going to select the model we're going to go to the copy tool here to make a copy of this model and I'm going to copy and paste it back in the same place and with that copy selected I'm going to make a brand new layer we're going to call this blank model and I'm just going to right click and click change object layer to move that model to the blank model layer now let's just kind of move it up here I'm going to put it under the default for now what I can now do is I can turn off my base model then I'm going to select my blank model which is on this blank model layer here. We can even do that by right clicking and select objects and then I'm going to go to the materials palette. We're going to make a brand new material. We'll just make it physically based and we're going to make sure it's white and we're going to get a roughness of 100% to make it very matte and we're just going to assign that to the object. So now we've just got this white model here. What we can then do is go back to our render properties just as we did before. We're going to turn the sun back on to get that dark sun shadow in there. And then we're going to go back to our animation, set up our sun study once again, just making sure that all the settings are correct here. 
hit OK, and then we're going to hit record, target folder, select my sunpath folder and hit enter to start that animation. What you can see now is rendering out each frame of the animation but it's using the white model instead of the coloured model. And this will be useful because it will allow us to then overlay these shadows on top of my base but we will be able to tweak them separately from the colour of the base model in order to kind of tweak the colour, tweak the look of those particular shadows. So depending on how many shadows you have and how many frames of your animation you have that might take a bit of time just to render out each of those frames but once we have them we'll end up with a kind of series of frames that look like this and we'll also have our base layer that will look something like this here and what we're now going to do is combine those together you can see a little preview of your animation if you just click on this animation option here which will give a quick preview of and we can loop that as well if we want to of that particular animation if we want to. Now we're going to use Photoshop to combine these together so I'm just going to pause the video and open up my Photoshop file and then we're going to load these layers into that file. We're going to begin by loading all of our frames simultaneously into our Photoshop file. To do this we're going to go to Photoshop, go to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. In here we're going to hit the Browse option we're going to locate our frames from our sun path animation, select all those frames and hit OK, and then hit OK again, and this will load them into our layers in simultaneous fashion, ordering them as they would be in the animation. And we're going to end up with a stack of layers for that animation in our layers panel. Now to turn this into an animation, we need to turn on what's called the timeline window in Photoshop. This can be found under window and timeline here. Now I've already opened mine, it looks a little bit like this, and I've just docked it in the bottom of the screen just by dragging it down until it goes kind of blue down the bottom there, and you can dock it down there. Now in order to create my animation, I can then hit Create Frame Animation, and you'll see it makes the first frame of my animation with the first layer that we have on. To turn this whole thing into an animation now, I can click on this little options panel on the corner of the timeline, and we can hit this Make Frames from Layers option and it will make a single frame for each of the layers I have in my Photoshop file. Now we've done that, we can see we have a, a frame for each layer and if I hit Play here, it will then play that as a quick animation. We can change the speed of that by selecting all the layers and dialing up the time for each layer in this option here. And this will make a slightly more sort of staggered animation just scrolling through our sun study. Now if you wanted a smoother animation like we were showing before, you would have to re-render it with a slow, smaller increment between the kind of time for each frame, which would give that kind of more frames for your animation and therefore a smoother animation overall. We're having more of a kind of stop-start animation where we're just going through the steps of the sun cycle here. Now something it also does is it actually reverses the frames when you bring them in. So in order to flip them back again, we can select all of our frames go to the little options panel here and click this reverse frames option and it will flip them round to be the right way and then you'll have the sun study going in the right direction from morning to evening there. Now we've got that we're now going to bring in the colour layer and overlay this over the top. What's important is we start back on frame one when we do this because then it will apply it to the rest of the animation. So I'll just click on frame one before I take that image and import it in. Once we've done that I'm going to go to my file, find that base image I took, and we're just going to drag it and drop it into our file like so. And because I did them both at the same aspect ratio, they match up nicely one on top of the other. Now in order to then merge or blend this with the layers below, I can select that base layer, go to my blending mode, which is in this normal drop down here, and we're going to click on multiply. And that will then blend it with the layers below and will allow that shadow to come through. And if I hit play, you can now see that we've got the shadow coming through that and overlaying onto the coloured version of my image. Now if you want to tweak that shadow, perhaps I don't want it as dark as it's showing here and maybe we want to kind of have a slightly lighter shadow, maybe we want to colour tint it as well. What we're going to do is I'm going to go back to frame number one and above this frame I'm just going to go on my adjustment layers here and we're going to put on a hue saturation adjustment. With that we're going to turn on colourize and we're going to scroll the hue to a sort of blue tone in this case. I'm going to up the lightness of that layer and we're going to up the saturation 
So we've got quite a nice sort of blue overlay to that image. And you can make this any color you want. I'm doing blue because it kind of looks quite nice in this case. And what this would do is essentially color tinting and lightening up that shadow there. And if we play it back, you'll see now it's much softer and we've got that kind of nice blue tint over the shadow rather than that kind of pure black render that we had at the beginning. We can also see some of the details because it's not obstructing them with that really dark shadow. And we can tint that any color we want to. We could have shades of red, we could have different shades of green as well in there. I find that blue works quite well, but you might want to have a different aesthetic for your particular model that you're doing. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how to render out a shadow study in Rhino and compile it in Photoshop. Once you get to this point, if you want to then export this as a video file, we can do that just by going to File, Export, and render video here. And this will allow us to render out this animation as an MP4 video. And we can hit render there and it will save that file out as an MP4. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. And if you want to go through any other videos on rendering or animation in Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.